when we cry, Abba, Father, it is the Spirit of God bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God. pray, O God, the protector of all who trust in you, without whom nothing is strong, nothing is holy. Increase and multiply upon us your mercy, that with you as our ruler and guide, we may so pass through things temporal, that we lose not the things eternal. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, 
one God forever and ever. Please be seated. <clears throat> A reading from the book of Hosea. When the Lord first spoke through Hosea, the Lord said to Hosea, Go, take for yourself a wife of whoredom and have children of whoredom, for the land commits great whoredom by forsaking the Lord. So he went and took Goma, daughter of Diblaim, and she conceived and bore him a son. And the Lord said to him, Name him Jezreel, for in a little while I will punish the house of Jehu for the blood of Jezreel. And I will put an end to the kingdom of the house of Israel. On that day, I will break the bow of Israel in the valley of Jezreel. She conceived again and bore a daughter. Then the Lord said to him, Name her Lo Ruhamah, for I will no longer have pity on the house of Israel or forgive them. But I will have pity on the house of Judah, and I will save them by the Lord their God. I will not save them by bow, or by sword, or by war, or by horses, or by horsemen. When she had weaned Loruhama, she conceived and bore a son. Then the Lord said, Name him Loami, for you are not my people, and I am not your God. Yet the number of the people of Israel shall be like the sand of the sea, which can be neither measured nor numbered. And in the place where it was said to them, you are not my people, it shall be said to them, children of the living God, the word of the Lord. Psalm 85. Congregation, please say the refrain. Show us your mercy. You have been gracious to your land, O Lord. You have restored the good fortune of Jacob. You have forgiven the iniquity of your people and blotted out all their sins. You have withdrawn all your fury and turned yourself with your wrathful indignation. Show us your mercy. <clears throat> Restore us then, O God, our Savior. Let your anger depart from us. Will you be displeased with us forever? Will you prolong your anger from age to age? Will you not give us life again, that your people may rejoice in you? Show us your mercy. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. I will listen to what the Lord God is saying, for he is speaking peace to his faithful people and to those who turn their hearts to him. Truly, his salvation is very near to those who fear him, that his glory may dwell in our land. Show us your mercy. Mercy and truth have met together. Righteousness and peace have kissed each other. Truth shall spring up from the earth, and righteousness shall look down from heaven. Show us your mercy. The Lord will indeed grant prosperity, and our land will yield its increase. Righteousness shall go before him, and peace shall be a pathway for his feet. Show us your mercy. God of grace, 
You loved the world so much that you gave your only son to be our savior. Help us to rejoice in our salvation by showing mercy and truth and by walking in the way of righteousness and peace. We ask this in his name and for his sake. Amen. Amen. Reading from the letter of Paul to the Colossians. As you therefore have received Christ Jesus the Lord, continue to live your lives in him, rooted and built up in him and established in the faith, just as you were taught, abounding in thanksgiving. See to it that no one takes you captive through philosophy and empty deceit, according to human tradition, according to the elemental spirits of the universe and not according to Christ. For in him, the whole fullness of deity dwells bodily and you have come to fullness in him who is the head of every ruler and authority. In him also you were circumcised with a spiritual circumcision by putting off the body of the flesh in the circumcision of Christ. When you were buried with him in baptism, you were also raised with him through faith in the power of God who raised him from the dead. And when you were dead in trespasses and the uncircumcision of your flesh, God made you alive together with him when he forgave us all our trespasses, erasing the record that stood against us with its legal demands. He set this aside, nailing it to the cross. He disarmed the rulers and authorities and made a public example of them, triumphing over them in it. Therefore, do not let anyone condemn you in matters of food and drink or of observing festivals, new moons, or Sabbaths. These are only a shadow of what is to come but the substance belongs to Christ. Do not let anyone disqualify you, insisting on self-abasement and worship of angels, dwelling on visions, puffed up without cause by a human way of thinking, and not holding fast to the head, from whom the whole body, nourished and held together by its ligaments and sinews, grows with a growth that is from God. The word of the Lord. with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus was praying in a certain place, and after he had finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray. As John taught his disciples, he said to them, when you pray, you say, Father, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, give us the day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins. 
For we ourselves forgive everyone in debt to us, and do not bring us at the time of trial. And he said to them, Suppose one of you had a friend, and you go to him at midnight and say to him, Friend, lend me your bread, for a friend of mine has arrived, and I have nothing to set before you. And he answered from within, Do not bother me. The door has already been knocked, and my children are in me in bed. I cannot get up and give you anything. I tell you, even though he will not get up and give him anything, because he is his friend, at least because of his persistence, he will not get up and give him whatever he needs. So I say to you, ask and it will be given you. Search and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened for you. For everyone who asks and receives, and everyone who searches finds, and for everyone who knocks the door will be opened. Is there anyone among you who, if your child asks for a fish, will he give a snake instead of a fish? Or if the child asks for an egg, will it a scorpion? If you then, who are evil, know how to give gifts to your children, how much more will the Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask of him? The Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I speak to you in the name of the creating God who redeems and sustains. Amen. Lord, teach us how to pray. Father, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread. And forgive us our sins, for we ourselves forgive everyone indebted to us. And do not bring us to the time of trial. This is the Lord's Prayer as found in Luke's Gospel. What can one find to say about prayer in an environment where it can be used as a cover for hypocrisy, an easy mantra to fool the vulnerable? Our thoughts and prayers are with you politicians say to bereaved parents whose children were gunned down because these same politicians failed to do what is just and good. Even the ancients understood that empty prayers meant nothing. There was a saying in ancient Greece, together with Athena, move your own hands also. Do something, don't just pray. The disciples had witnessed that whenever Jesus, the one they call master, exhausted himself doing good, he would withdraw from the crowd in order to pray. And they had seen the results of that prayer in his life transforming deeds and his unfathomable peace. Lord, teach us how to pray. They too wanted that peace and strength. The utter assurance that Jesus had in doing the will of his Father. Lord, teach us how to pray. I'm interested in the way Luke sets up the idea of prayer and what it is and what it means to pray in the same as, as, as Jesus prayed. The story begins with Jesus' disciples coming to him and asking him to teach them to pray. And they want to pray as John's disciples prayed. 
And they wanted to pray as followers of Jesus and not as followers of John or any other prophet. The inference in that request is that we are defined by our prayers. And Jesus' disciples would pray differently than John's disciples or disciples of any other prophet. So I noticed several things in thinking about that and thinking about that inference. One, while the disciples request that Jesus teach them to pray, Jesus doesn't give them words to pray, but a container of what prayer ought to include. In fact, the Lord's Prayer, as we say it, is a method for how to be intimate with God in the same manner that Jesus is intimate with God. So what did we learn from that thought? One, that prayer is something that one learns, something that can be taught, which is why the disciples went to Jesus and said, Lord, teach us how to pray. This is difficult at times because a potential stumbling block in understanding what we traditionally call the Lord's Prayer. It wasn't his prayer, was it? It wasn't what he prayed. It wasn't what he prayed when he went into the mountains to pray after he had been doing good. But the way he prayed was in that method described in the Lord's Prayer. Jesus responds to a disciple's request to be given a formula for praying, to be given some instruction, a method. How often we introduce this prayer and worship saying as we will later this morning, and now as our Savior taught us, we are bold to say. So is it the Lord's Prayer? Well, yes and no. He didn't teach his prayer but taught a way to pray and what to pray for. He gave it to his disciples as a way to form prayer. And there's another point about this prayer that is sometimes missed. This is a community prayer, not a private prayer. Whenever it occurs, it occurs at our liturgy when we're gathered together for common prayer. It is a prayer that first praises God and then makes three petitions of the ones who are praying it. The language of us and we, as you say this prayer again as we go forward in the Eucharist, you don't hear I, you don't hear you, you hear us and we. And the prayer assumes that the community shares the longing together for the coming of the kingdom. This puts a bit of an eschatological thrust on the prayer. The people who formed the early church believed with all their hearts and hoped that Jesus was coming back to lift them out of the oppression any day now. They expected that the kingdom would be established in their lifetime and that they would live with God forever. Hence, the community prayed the way Jesus instructed them in this Our Father. And it was difficult for the early church once they realized Jesus was not coming back in their own lifetime, that they had to completely reconstruct the liturgy, completely restruct their own worldview of what the kingdom of God was and is and how it would arrive. And that's been the Christian struggle up to this point. Another point in this prayer, the daily bread piece in Luke more accurately reads, not give us this day our daily bread, but day by day give us, or continue giving us, or each day give us. So it seems that for Luke, he wasn't looking for glorified bread and an eventual heavenly kingdom dinner party, but sustenance for the day, food for those who were encouraged to take up the cross daily. That's a whole different attitude, isn't it? And people who not only hook up the cross daily, but who were expected to travel on missionary journeys with only what is needed for the day. Remembering when Jesus sent the 72 disciples out? 
And Luke also, the one praying, asks for God's forgiveness of sins, not debts, while promising to forgive others their debts. This may be a reflection of Luke's concern that possessions not get in the way of community relationships. It may also be a reminder that God is the only one able to forgive sins and that we are always in debt one to another, always in relationship, not in hierarchy, but in relationship. Ultimately, the importance of the Lord's Prayer is not only that Jesus gave it to his disciples, but that it was picked up by early Christian worshipers and incorporated into their understanding of how God shall be praised and what it is right to ask for. And it is especially important that it has been handed down through generations to bind our communities together. So taking all of this, taking the container itself, how does Jesus teach his disciples and therefore us to pray? Three words, boldly, courageously, expectantly. Praise God. Place your needs before God. The prayer begins in boldness. It is a prayer of great courage, both praising, praising God and placing demands upon God's goodness, God's justice, it is the prayer of community. And as I said this morning, if we believe the opposite, we believe God is a vending machine. And that prayer is a vending machine. You put something in, a request in, you knock here, and in a vending machine, you get some kind of result one way or the other. That's not prayer. That's not the intent of prayer in the Lord's Prayer. The difficulty to seek and to knock and to be open to you comes out of this context of community comes out of this context of relationships. It doesn't come out of me, 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 I want, I want, I want. We hear a lot these days about Jesus as your personal savior. And it is common to hear the question, have you been saved? But that would have been a foreign notion to the Jewish community of that period and actually out of character with Jesus' teaching. It is all about community, not you and me individually. And in fact, the notion of Jesus as your personal savior is a 19th century concept in North American theology. That's not how the church understood that before. So, with that in mind, I want to end with how you pray. You pray in boldness, my friends. You stand strong. You lift up your head. You raise your voice. Never mistake that our God is a strong God ready to hear us. And pray together for the community, and more specifically the community of the Holy Trinity Church Thornhill. And as we pray strong, pray together, pray with our heads lifted up and raise our voices, that impacts on how we journey together as a group of human beings, as followers of Christ. And when we stand up and lift our head and raise our voice, we raise it for justice, we raise it for equality, we raise it for enhancing and emboldening our relationships with each other and our widening community. And God is strong enough that he hears us when we pray and seek and knock in these directions. This is what Jesus taught. Amen. Please stand. <clears throat> Let, Let us, us confess the faith of our baptism as we say, I believe in God. <clears throat> in Jesus Christ, the Son of our Lord, 
He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. You may be seated. We begin our prayers this week, praying for the safety and the arrival of Pope Francis to Toronto this afternoon for a week of meetings and reconciliation with the indigenous community. I want to remind you, as I did at 8 o'clock this morning in the Globe and Mail yesterday, there was a long article about not only his coming, but the history of the struggle of indigenous peoples in North America using the doctrine of discovery. And those of you who were part of my uh, anti-bias racism workshop in January, we saw that film. We looked, in, looked at the issues surrounding indigenous people as they understood it, and we listened to them in their own words, describe their own reality, their own experiences. This article sort of is a continuation of that. So I advise you, if you have the interest, to read that. Uh, it's a very interesting article. So we pray for that. We also realize that there are many people in the indigenous community who are not happy by this visit because they've had very little participation in planning this. This is one of the issues of uh, people of color dealing with the majority population about who's at the table and how things are arranged. Uh, so there's complaints, we hear that, and they've said that. Uh, but at the same time, we pray for the outcome of that visit, uh, that there is some reconciliation, some movement forward. Reconciliation not in words, but as I said in my sermon, but uh, reconciliation in deeds. I also want to pray for the opening of the Lambeth Conference. It's on the 26th, I think that's Thursday. That is the every, the tenure meeting of all the bishops of the Anglican community throughout the world to discuss issues of the church and the directions the churches might need to take in certain areas. So we want to pray for that, for the bishops, that they are not going to be as argumentative as they have been the last two Lambeth Conferences, particularly over the area of sexuality uh, and women's ordination. Uh, we also want to pray Apparently, uh, the mounting spread of the monkeypox that's been listed in, on YouTube for the last three days uh, is becoming serious. Uh, so we pray for the finding of a vaccine. We're praying for people who are, have caught that virus. We, uh, and we ask God's blessing. We seek and knock, and we ask that uh, somehow that God listens to that prayer uh, as these people struggle with this disease. Marley. Let us pray with confidence to the Lord by saying, Lord, have mercy. For peace from on high and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. For peace of the whole world, especially for Ukraine, and for the welfare of the Holy Church of God. In our Anglican cycle of prayer, we pray for the Church in Wales and for the unity of all. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. For our bishops and for all the clergy in our parish, for the Reverend Canon Barbara Hammond, Father Brian Youngward, Brother Reginald Crenshaw, and the Reverend Canon Stephen Crowther, for our staff, our many volunteers who contribute in so many ways, and for our virtual chapel coordinators. In our diocese, Victoria and Halliburton Deanery. In our deanery, St. Mary's Richmond Hill, the Reverend Matthew McMillan incumbent. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. For Elizabeth, our queen, for the leaders of the nations, and for all in authority, 
for Mary, the Governor General, Justin, the Prime Minister, Doug, the Premier, Maurizio, Frank, David, John, the mayors of our cities. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. For Thornhill, Toronto, Vaughan, and all of York Region, and for every city and community, and for those who live in them in faith. In our parish family, we pray for Janie Reed, Alan Richards, Elizabeth Richardson, Diane Rimmer, Heather Rivet. For good weather and for abundant harvests for all to share, especially for Afghanistan, and for the disenfranchised and marginalized in our communities. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. For those who travel by land, water, or air, for the sick and the suffering, especially Anne, Suzanne, Fred, Ian, Jean Dye, Jean Gliona, Cleo, Keith, Florence, for prisoners and captives, and for their safety, health, and salvation. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord for our deliverance from all affliction, strife, and need, let us pray to the Lord. Lord. For all who have died, especially Glenn and France Talhurst, her brother and sister-in-law, let us pray to the Lord. Remembering all the saints, we commit ourselves, one another, and our whole life to Christ, our God. To, to you, O oh Lord. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time, <clears throat> with one accord, to make our common supplications to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together, you will hear their requests. Fulfill now our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come eternal life. For you, Father, are good and loving, and we glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, in the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And we continue with the Parish Selection Committee prayer. Almighty God, Look graciously on us, the members of Holy Trinity Church Thornhill, during this time of transition. Be with us and lead us as we seek the next priest and pastor for our community. We ask your direction and guidance for those who have been appointed to identify a new incumbent, that we may choose an incumbent and faithful leader who will care for your people and equip us for ministry. Grant them ears to hear the voices of those whom they will interview, ears to hear each other as they deliberate, and ears that are attentive to your voice as they discern the best choice for us at this time. Continue to lead us with your Holy Spirit as we patiently wait upon you and on the outcome of, <coughs> pardon me, on the, and on the outcome of this process. This we ask through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. <clears throat> Dear friends in Christ, God is steadfast in love and infinite in mercy. He welcomes sinners and invites them to his table. Let us confess our sins, confident in God's forgiveness. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. 
for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please stand. <clears throat> the peace of the Lord be always with you. God of grace, accept all we offer you this day as we look toward the glory you have promised. This we ask in the name of Jesus Christ, 
Child of the Lord. <clears throat> the Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right that we should praise you, gracious God, for you created all things. You formed us in your own image, male and female, you created us. When we turned away from you in sin, you did not cease to care for us, but opened a path of salvation for all people. You made a covenant with Israel, and through your servants Abraham and Sarah gave the promise of a blessing to all nations. Through Moses, you led your people from bondage into freedom. Through the prophets, you renewed your promise of salvation. And therefore, with them and with all your saints who have served you in every age, we give thanks and raise our voices to proclaim the glory of your name. <clears throat> Let us pray. Thank you very much. Holy God, source of life and goodness, all creation rightly gives you praise. In the fullness of time, you sent your son, Jesus Christ, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father, of all. He healed the sick and ate and drank with outcast and sinners. He opened the eyes of the blind and proclaimed the good news of your kingdom to the poor and to those in need. In all things, he fulfilled your gracious will. On the night he freely gave himself to death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Gracious God, his perfect sacrifice destroys the power of sin and death. And by raising him to life, you give us life forevermore. And therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. <coughs> Christ will come again. Recalling his death, proclaiming his resurrection, and looking for his coming again in glory, we offer you, Father, this bread and this cup. Send your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these gifts, that all who eat and drink at this table may be one body and one holy people, a living sacrifice in Jesus Christ, our Lord, through Christ, with Christ, and in Christ in the unity of the Holy Spirit, 
All glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. I am the bread of life which has come down from heaven, says the Lord. I am the vine, you are the branches. And the gifts of God for the people of God. We worship and adore you, Lord Jesus Christ, present in the Holy Sacrament and in your people who are gathered in spirit. In this moment, I join with them to receive you in my heart and in our community. May you, enthroned on the altar, be now enthroned in my heart. May you, present in bread and wine, feed and renew my soul. May you, who give yourself to us again, fill us with grace and heavenly blessing. Even as I am fed, may my hunger for you and for your reign of justice and peace increase that I may, empowered by your spirit, work for that day when your reign shall come on earth as it is in heaven. Amen.
God of grace, we have received the memorial of the death and resurrection of your Son. May your love poured into us bring us to your promises. We ask this in the name of our Redeemer, Jesus Christ. Amen. And glory to God. <clears throat> And may the blessing of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you, with those you love, and with those you dislike this day and always. Amen. Announcements. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, a number of things. Uh, first of all, I'll start with Peter. Um, just a reminder, he will not, underlined, not be in the parking lot on Wednesday, but he wanted to thank you very much. Uh, and the food bank wants to thank you very much because apparently last week you made outstanding donations mm -hmm. to the food bank, so thank you. And we'll keep you... Um, We'll keep you posted on what the schedule will be like in, in August. Um, the next thing is we, we have a new website. It is still a work in progress, but it is fresher, cleaner, and has some new uh, pictures and images on it. So bear with us, but if you have suggestions, ideas, or contributions, please let the office know. Um, and as promised, we now have the, the gardening tool that allows you to weed without getting down on your hands and knees to weed. So uh, for those like me, that it takes a few minutes to get down and a few minutes to get back up again. Um, this, is a, this is indeed a blessing. So if you feel like coming and trying it out sometime, please let us know and we'll be only too glad to demonstrate. Um, we also are uh, asking for um, any small uh, toys for um, uh, stuffed animals for our, our collection at the, at the back of the church, the Noah's Ark. So if you have anything like that from your children or your grandchildren, they no longer need them, please consider a donation. Uh, finally, um, I had a, a long, well, not too long, but a conversation um, yesterday with Canon Barb. Uh, she is on the road to recovery. It's just taking a little longer than we thought, so she will not be with us next Sunday. And Father Brian, wherever he is back there, uh, has agreed to, uh, to come back to us for at least one more Sunday. She is doing well. She is in good spirits. She thanks you for your prayers and especially for some of the cards she has been receiving. She tells me she has them all lined up on the mantelpiece in their family room. So, and so she feels your good spirits and your goodwill coming to her. So she says thank you very much and she can't wait to get back with us. So uh, maybe it's raining. We can hope for a, hope for a little rain for our gardens and and for the wells and for the farms. And, uh, but today is a new day, a day full of promise. So go make it happen. Take care.
rejoicing as you love and serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. <clears throat> Thank you, everybody. and I was there after the three weeks and then 